Hey everybody, welcome to TE Walks Live. Here we are in Villa Torlonia. It's me, Rob Allen, here with uh, Dylan Roberts helping out. Sorry for the delay. Let's go back to a close up of me. Okay, guys, so Thomas and Mario and uh, Dylan are going to be very excited because for the first time I'm actually going to be using a gimbal stick. Now, uh, ciao, Pips. Bear, bear with me, guys. Uh, we had to get a nice new adapter for Dylan's microphone so that you can hear me clearly this time. So, sorry for the delay, but we're going to be going through a fascinating area that I really want to learn more about myself as well as you guys. So, it, it has to do with this, this group of people, this family called the uh, Torlonia. You know, I don't even know where to look directly on this camera. Anyway. Okay, so the Torlonia family became very wealthy. Uh, they were originally from French origin, but they became very wealthy in the late 1700s and the early 1800s. They were bankers and they were financers for the popes. Now keep that in mind. Uh, even up to 1969, they apparently became, uh, they were given a title of the official uh, prince assistants to the popes and they still have these titles today they're one of the I think it's just the Torlonia family and the Colonna family that have these titles uh, and what we're gonna look at is just one piece of their their properties and why did I want to take you guys here because um, a few about a week ago Dylan myself Graceland and Thomas went to see an exhibit that all the tour guides we were all very excited to see because it was the uh, the Torlonia exhibit uh, apparently, the Torlonia family, they were very much uh, supporters of the fascists. And we'll talk about that, too, of course. They were supporters of the fascists. They don't necessarily get along with the state of Italy. They had one of the greatest collections of antiquities um, in the world. And their collection was in a villa. No, excuse me, in a palace in Trastevere. And then all of a sudden, it disappeared for over 100 years. And it was only recently that they decided to open it up to the public and we went to see it at the Capitoline Museums. So I just wanted you guys to see one of their properties. They still own five different major properties in Rome. So this, just to give you guys an idea, when so many of these noble families that we talk about from the past, like the Orsini, uh, or the Scalchi, many, many others, the Barberini, uh, they no longer have these properties. They don't have the money to maintain them, but the Torlonia family does with most of them. Where we're going today, they don't. They This is something that's open for the public. And let's just take a little peek at it right now, okay? So, Villa Torlonia. We're just looking at part of it right here. That's the major villa. This was a villa out on the Via Nomentana. So, it's going to get loud in a second. I want to walk for you guys to the gates because the Via Nomentana was one of these lovely uh, roads of Rome. But their villa was designed really by Giuseppe Valadier and it is neoclassical in design. And it was started in around 1806. Now bear with me guys because I really should have my mask on. And I did want to say one other thing and I'm going to switch over to a second so you can see me. This is uh, a live video going on right now, but it may be one of our last uh, live videos because there's going to probably be another uh, lockdown. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have other guides like Guya had done last Friday. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we will try to, if we can, uh, pre-record things. And as soon as the lock, and we'll, we'll show you guys these pre-recorded videos, but um, as soon as... Uh, Dylan, tell me to put up. There we go. All right, Dylan, where do I need to look at right here? Is it this part? Because it's really it's odd it. for me. Okay. So as soon as uh, we have the lockdown finished, then we will uh, start to do the live tours again. Anyway, yes, I am live. It's not a pre-recorded. <laughs> you can hear me. What do I always like to say? Uh, warts and all. Anyway, Dylan's giving me what? Put my mask on. Yeah, I'm going to be doing the right thing. I'll put my mask on. Because that's what we're supposed to do. It's a law right now. And since I'm walking around, I'm not hiding behind a rock or trees. We're going to go out to the Via Nomentana. Wow, this is not easy to do with one hand. It's like a real disaster. There we go. I got it. Although, like, I have, like, uh, funky ears. Okay, so, guys, let's go out to the Via Nomentana. 
So, Navino Mintana, like, so do you guys know that all roads lead to Rome? Well, there are these various roads. There are roads that were built for specific purposes, like the Via La Spezia, Via Salaria, or also the roads that would be built by consuls, or else you would have roads that would lead to separate towns, like Via Latina. So, we have here in front of us a Via Nomentana, so it went to the town of Nomentum. Now, it's a major road in Rome right now, and personally, guys, out of all the roads of Rome, today, I think this happens to be the most beautiful, has the most beautiful villas going through it. Anyway, uh, here I just wanted to show you the entryway, something that's so magnificent. Okay, let's see. For some reason, the camera's not following me through. Hey, Dill, this is not working well. Anyway, there we go. This was the gateway designed by Giuseppe Valadier, and this was for the Tolonia family. It was started by Giovanni Torlonia, and he lived for it for a while, and then his son took over, uh, Alessandro Torlonia. So we have the front of us this wonderful villa. And we're going to walk up. Now, Alessandro also had constructed, these are not original ancient obelisks. There were two of them, one in the front and one in the back. We're going to go through. They're dedicated to Alessandro's parents. Still, this doesn't seem to be working. I'm going like this. Oh, now it's Voila. working. Voila. So I have these ones dedicated to Alessandro's parents. <sighs> yes, it is. I see Thomas is writing to Sandra. Oh dear, what happened? I have to hold it. Oh, always? Yeah, the balance might be off because of the weight. The weight of what? It's not working. Just hold this. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Oh, is it the way where, where is it? Anyway, guys, like what we're also going to be doing is you have to imagine that this whole villa place, we're going to walk back this way, uh, has different areas that have been recreated from the neoclassic times. And if you can see through here, we even have the remnants. Uh, well, it's not an authentic ancient temple. Two temples are built here. They're recreated for us from the beginning of the 19th century. And I want you to take a look at them because they're fairly interesting to take a look at. And as we go through, oops, you just see the most of the Italians are doing what we all love to do at this time of day is you go on through a stroll through the park. This, by the way, guys, is the Torlonia family. Now, I forgot to mention to you one of the most important things in this major, beautiful villa in the center. Um, <clears throat> it eventually became the residence for Mussolini from the 1920s until 19. 43. So I did say that the Torlonia family were fascist emphasized. Uh, they empathize with the uh, the fascists and uh, they only charge Mussolini apparently one lira a year to live here. What's really interesting is we'll get to see a little place that they had built originally as a Swiss cottage but then became the house of the little owls where it was originally built to get away from the formality of the main villa. And it became the residence of whoever was left of the Tolonia family when Mussolini was living in the main residence. So we go through here. Taking a closer look at the villa. By the way, guys, this is about a five minute walk from our new offices in Piazza Bologna. If you look over here, because I always say that Rome has a second spring. Of course, this is a beautiful acanthus bush. And the acanthus bush is what the Corinthian columns are based on. The, t the capitals of the columns are based on a motif of acanthus leaves. And they die during the summer and they come up again here. So look at this beautiful recreation. You see, what happened is after this place, after Mussolini left in 1943, eventually it became abandoned and fell into disrepair. Which, of course, happens if you don't have the money to maintain it. And it was only in the 1990s that they restored it. Now, what we have been doing uh, 
during this time of, um, well, where there hasn't been a lot of work going through, uh, Dylan and I have been filming all over and Dylan will be working through the winter to edit wonderful videos to put up on YouTube. And we're going to be covering over so many different parts of Rome. So today with our live tour, we're showing you things from the outside, but he and I were able to go on the inside of the villa and house of the owls. And we're going to be doing a specific video about the Torloni family. So you guys will eventually be able to see what things look like on the inside. Now look over here. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a so-called fictitious temple of Saturn. Remember guys, I love to show this stuff to you guys because where, wherever we go, you have to imagine anywhere in Rome or Naples or Florence and of course Venice. There are things just around the corner from you that you don't even know could have possibly existed. This is great. This is just something that they had built and has nothing to do with the ancient world, but it's kind of copying things that existed. You know, maybe up in the Pantheon, they had a, this depiction of all the gods being depicted and it was taken away. Look at, they have a recreation of theatrical masks or even from the beautiful triumphal mar arches that the Romans had. They have here a recreation of side panels, but of course you can go to the Capitoline Museums and see the original side panels. So this stuff is fenced off for the moment. Maybe it'll be cleaned up and fixed later. Now there's something else that's completely different from it all, guys. And I want us to see it. It's so special. It is what was originally known as the Swiss Cottage House. And then it was adapted in the early 1900s by an architect by the name of Gennady. And it became the House of the Owls. And it has over 50 examples of stained glass, beautiful stained glass windows. It's really, it's almost like we've come into a different area, a different country, Disney World, but it's authentic. The floors are beautiful wooden floors. The walls are spectacular and every little corner has wonderful details. Now, I should be allowed to go around this. I'm not gonna be able to go inside, but I shouldn't have any problem going around it, but you never know. So this is where the family moved when Mussolini took over the main villa. This part has become a library and a temporary exhibition space below. But it's just the wonderful details that we can see. The house. Take a look at the details of the stained glass windows. Dylan and I were here earlier and it was just wonderful because the light was shining through all the windows. Here's a little peek in the inside. Now there is no furniture anymore in the inside. But you don't need it. It is a wonderful time of day, guys. There's a slight breeze and it is November, but even so we're very lucky because earlier it was this kind of cold October and I knew at the beginning of October if it were cold we'd have a beautiful November and that's what we're having right now oh. all right it gets even better as we turn the corner but even look at the windows and look at the beautiful bars and it has a creation as if they're three-leaf clovers lining around a recreation of a garden 
Now even these windows, guys, look at the details. You can't see the full effect, but they are stained glass windows. And you can see on the inside that they have these displays of stained glass. You can see these wonderful floors. And this is something that many people who come to Rome, they don't get to see that often. Here we go. This is the really fairy tale part of the house. Look at that tiny little balcony up there. You can even go into that one, that tiny room from the doorway of that balcony. Each window here has a stained glass. And look at, we have hence the name, the House of the Owls. Look at this. So it just affords you every little corner, every place has amazing details. Can you guys get through? You can see the mosaic floor. Remember, all of this is not ancient, but modern and wonderful. This is where you actually exit. You go down this wonderful staircase where each little platform has a stained glass, a different stained glass. And even here, you could see the little snails put on the balustrade. But down here, there seems to be another level that we're not allowed to go to. And again, you could see the wonderful acanthus bushes. And look at the tile. Or here. So, of course, the brickwork is rec recalling something of ancient Roman brickwork. The Roman Empire. So, we'll finish going through this. Now, we're going to go walk under a little special bridge as part of the house complex. And I just love the bridge. I love the bridges in houses or buildings. windows. I was joking around with Dylan and you could even see it in our behind the scenes of the video making. I started singing Beauty and the Beast. And I love the serpent. By the way, can you guys even get a view on the inside and the detail? On the trim of the house, it's amazing. All right, so we're going to go back out to the rest of the villa of this park. It is open to the public to see that this villa was meant for pleasure. One could sleep and entertain and dine and entertain. There was also places of fountains and very various spectacular buildings were put up, even a theater. So we'll see what else we can find. Remember, guys, I always like to say when I was doing San Lorenzo Fuori di Mura that I kind of like to take it as the point of view of you guys, as if we're walking through.
So now we're going to go back from the main house. And don't worry guys, we're going to walk around the park and then we'll finish up towards the main area, the main villa. Well, I guess we can see some people doing social distancing and doing kickball and exercising, which is something that's allowed to be done right now. Here's the beautiful back of the house. Yep. Of course, the lighting is perfect. We're about to get to our sunset. This is the second obelisk and a triumphal column. Just later on. This is the back of the theater complex. It was like an outdoor performance space. So we'll get to go through there as much as we can, but there's a fountain that we'll take a look at too. So any of you guys watching, have you been to Villa Torlonia before? Now there's something here that yet I have yet to see, but one could reserve specifically is that of course, if we have a head of state living here, just like we have at the White House, and I know everyone's thinking about the White House today, but uh, here's the backside of the main villa, the main palace in the villa, Villa Torlonia. So apparently Mussolini had bunkers built underneath and one could go visit them today. This is a self-sufficient park. I think it's been a good time inside here. And they even have this kind of farmhouse over here that's been recreated. And uh, they have a nice little bar and a pizzeria. Where's where Dylan and I had lunch today. The beautiful gazebo. Thanks, John Carboni. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the tour. Ah. And just to let you guys kind of know, it's kind of an upper middle class area of Rome. So this is uh, the upper middle class that are kind of hanging out. Look at them, they're having their um, aperitivo. Or sometimes they would say an apericena. Because sometimes it's better to go out and get an aperitivo and pay a lower fee to get a bunch of all you can eat. That's what a lot of younger people like to do as opposed to paying out for a full dinner. But I think it's quite common in a lot of these parks is to have these beautiful, well, not beautiful, let's just say, kind of rustic stones put along the borders. It's a classic thing in Rome. Ha! No, Dylan isn't humming the hills are alive with the sound of music, were you? Maybe. Maybe he was. Another music. He was humming another musical, Thomas. But again, here are these kind of rustic walls. Of course, we're gonna walk through here. Look at these, these, of course, this wasn't in ancient times, but these wonderful bamboo forests. Another video that we discovered that was wonderful for filming for us 
was the uh, Botanical Gardens in Trastevere. We've done everything you guys can possibly think of. Okay. We have another triumphal column over here. Yeah, this is the lovely conservatory, and they called it a theater as well. I haven't seen a bit, a bit of work before. You do need to come, Francesca. Guadagno to Rome. But there's lots for us to see in Naples, too. Here was a section. Remember, guys, so they started to get funding for this to restore it in the uh, 1990s. So that was over 20 years ago. And there's still work to be done. But to do that kind of work, it ne you need a lot of money. There's kind of this area that's torn down a bit that I think would be interesting to take a look at. Oh, look at Here's a view. The Civette. The House of the Owls. That is just one of the most beautiful hidden gems in Rome that no one would ever think would ever be in this city. Yes, Francesca is our Herculaneum queen who is writing. And Thomas was our Pinacoteca king. Well, he's done all this stuff too. Francesca was just asking me, guys, she wants to be doing a food tour and talking about Christmas traditions in Naples. She asked if that would be a good idea, and I said, I think it sounds like a wonderful idea. So don't worry, guys, even though there's going to be probably another lockdown, we are continuing to create more content, more virtual tours for you guys all uh, to enjoy. Gosh. Dylan, is this making you think it's time for us to start exercising? It's time for me to, like, I've been eating a lot of comfort food, guys. And i got to start working it off. Anyway. Let me just try to go down this way and not walk on anybody's wallet. Left over there. The dog running. Kids boxing. Remember guys, the government did say that you could exercise without your mask. So don't worry. They're following the rules. Yeah, this is the kind of place I thought was a bit interesting that they need to fix if it ever. I mean, I don't know if it's ever going to get fixed because the roof has collapsed. Remember, guys, this is the idea of like if you were walking through. I don't know about you, but I certainly would peek through. Look at the walls are, are still painted on the inside, but the roof is entirely collapsed. And I think what we're walking to here is supposed to be called the Theater of the Moors. <laughs> Ciao, Sandra. I'm glad you think I'm funny. I try to be. It's funny, you know, whenever I write to the guides in the WhatsApp group, I think I write something very funny and there's no response often, complete silence. Dylan's laughing in the background because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh. 
probably always when one tries not to be funny is when they're the funniest. Anyway. Just imagine, guys, if we could climb over the fence and get over. We're not going to climb over the fence, don't worry. But yeah, so again, this is what? It's called the Moore Theater. So there's always these different areas that have been recreated within this magnificent villa. And the walkways are even rustic, I guess. So guys, if you see that all of a sudden things start bouncing around, even with the gimbal stick, You know why? Because this ground is a bit uneven. It makes for a better workout. So before it starts to get too dark, we're going to get towards the main villa and walk around the beautiful building. And we'll pick up the pace a little bit. I would climb the fence, but I don't want to get into trouble, Thomas. Although I will tell you a secret, many years ago, one could not do it today. A group of us, nobody who works in the company anymore, but a group of us snuck through the uh, fence and we went into where the hut of Romulus was and we had some wine and cheese and salami and I'm talking 1998 or something and toasted to Romulus. As one does. Okay. So I'm going to do a little shortcut here. Okay. Get another view of everybody working in this arena. Of course, everybody likes a puppy. Here we got a little puppy. Toe. A lot of puppies. Oh. Okay. I have to say, you know, um, seeing everybody walk around here at this time of night, well, time of day, towards dusk, you know, Italy's been going through a really tough time, like everybody else, but I kind of find it beautiful to say, to see that people are able to interact, be careful enjoy their lives and not be too burdened by what's going on in the world right now. I don't think they're ignoring it, but they're enjoying the moments. I think we should all do. I try to. So guys, we're going to walk up to the main palace that was uh, designed by Valadier, and we'll take a peek through the windows if we can, because they have a spectacular ballroom. Earlier today when Dylan and I were walking in, uh, we were able to see one of the bedrooms with some original furniture. It could have been reused. You guys see where the columns are and to the left, the first floor above, there were some shutters open. That was one of the main bedrooms. Didn't specify though if it was Mussolini's room or not. You have to imagine every room in this building has wonderful frescoes decorated and also they have these plasters 
of pieces done by uh, Conova, the great neoclassic sculptor. Okay, so here we're going to take a look at the ballroom inside the palace. There's some modern art being displayed in the building. I'm always thinking, just ignore that, but look at the chandeliers peek through. It is awesome, Sandra. All right. And we'll go out to the front of the building. The recreation of a lovely Doric columns. I mean, look at this. The roof. Oop. That's a good place to work out if you can do it. Here we have a, a kind of neo-gothic decorated room with a copy of a statue that was found in the ancient town of Gabi. Gabinus. This is a copy, the original one. I'm not sure where the original one was kept. But we had an architect, not architect, what am I saying? An archaeologist, Anna Galone, who has been supervising these digs in the town of Gabi, right outside of Rome. And she invited me and a former manager, Rachel, to come and visit the digs. She was working with the University of Michigan. It's wonderful. So it's amazing, guys, to see this neoclassical interior decoration and then you have these ancient statues placed inside and copies there we have a copy of a famous Catacala bust well I guess it wouldn't be bad to be a Torlonia member of the family or also Mussolini who lived here for over 20 years from the 20s until 19... 43. Then we all kind of know what happened to him afterwards. So let's just have one more look. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Uh, it was a nice, wonderful stroll through the park. Just remember, as I said before, that we, uh, I'm not sure how much longer we'll be able to do these live walks, if there's going to be a lockdown, which probably is imminent, but we're gonna try to do videos if we can, as much as we can, to keep things going for you. And I hope everyone stays well, stays safe. Uh, and if you're from the United States, make sure you vote. Let your opinion be heard. Um, and have a great time. See you guys soon. Ciao.